Today's show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch that we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their pitch right pouches are jam packed with over 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers who live to help other brewers learn more and ferment better. Join any recipe receiving tier of our super duper homebrew club and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and come brew with us. Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Plastic faucets versus stainless steel faucets, methods for conical temperature control, regulator creeping, and immersion versus plate chillers. This is Homebrew Happy Hour, Episode 224. Missed the button again. Hey, and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on that submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325. 325- 305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Stooming. Today, I'm joined by the Director of Operations at CM Becker International, right down there, Mr. James Carlson, as well as hey, over hey. my right shoulder over here, boy, over my right shoulder, and then I pointed my left, Chief Keg Washer, President of KegConnection.com, Mr. Todd Burns. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good. Good. You're good. Uh, Todd, I saw you when I, we have a new Imperial ad at the top. And uh, hip hop is not y'all's kind of track. I saw, I didn't look at you, James. You were on your phone, I think. Todd had his eyes rolling like, what garbage music did he pick for that ad? Um, do you want to, do you have something you want to say? Because no, no, I was, I was actually laughing because you were like, oh, I missed the button again. Oh, 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 hello. And I was like, he, he does it every week. Is that a stick or do you really mess up? Well, first off, it's every single stick, week? Stick, stick. It's not a shtick. I, I, I just said uh, I hit the wrong button on the no. I have a, a little it's called Elgato no. Stream Deck. They don't give me money, uh, but I would I would they could sponsor the show if they wanted to. I hit the wrong button. And so it didn't change the screen. So I was like, that was my cue. I just missed my cue. And do I miss it every week? Yeah, I have it at this <laughs> lower part of my desk. And you would think with the new office, the new desk, I would have it in a more convenient spot. But I just replicated my last office desk setup to where it's just as hey. inconvenient. It looks good though. I like your office, yeah, by the that, way. I like the, the Winnie the Pooh thing there. That's cute. It's not Winnie the yeah, Pooh. Yeah, both of y'all look a lot better than my <laughs> no, crappy background. No, no, no. Well, I, I, I'm still figuring out this this corner. Um, I what I there's in the future. I'm gonna try an episode with a different backdrop because my monitors are on swivel mounts, so I think I can make it work just fine. And I'm gonna have the bigger part of the office as a background. I don't know. You'll see it next week. And also I realized I could start using our cinematic camera as a webcam. I have a little dongle that allows me to connect it. So I figure what if my camera stuff looked like really good and then y'all are still using the the webcams. I know I wish <laughs> I still had that other cam I really like that other camera I used to have. What's wrong with the one you have right now? It's too wide. I like that. James, don't you think that it's a good shot? Yeah, um, I think everybody looks pretty good. <laughs> James the diplomat. Everybody looks pretty good. Anyway, welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. We're happy to have y'all. It's been a fun uh, week uh, for me. It's been great weather. Uh, Easter coming up. I don't know if you guys, I want to start off with small talk. Uh, did coronavirus ruin y'all's Easter plans this year or are y'all having stuff going on? No, I hadn't ruined mine. My kids are coming in and... Uh, you know, my wife and I have both been vaccinated, and I think my kids are about to get vaccinated. So, uh, my parents have been vaccinated for you know they have all their shots. So, you know, we're we're I think we're good this year. We're not going to have a lot. Uh, we're just going to have family. So, it, you know, it's a small uh, small group. James, you doing anything for Easter Sunday? No. <laughs> the shortest answer ever. I like that. Like, nope, not going to do it. Nope. Nope. You're not no even going to. Gonna- 
No well, vaccination. None of that. <laughs> oh, I didn't update y'all. I didn't get vaccinated. Uh, they, it wasn't available. Well, I went to get in line for the Johnson and but but like you, Mister Carlson, I'm on a list. Are, uh, for the Johnson yeah, and Johnson. I've been on this for two months. I oh, mean, I don't understand what the deal is. Well, it's going to be awful if I get it before you. Uh, <laughs> I am on the list, and mainly because I'm trying to justify Todd taking me on trips again. He's convinced there's going to be stipulations from these airlines that you have to, like the, the yeah, they'll have to be. They'll you'll have you have, have to prove card. it right. So are you, if they open are you it back up? Are you calling? I would call like every. Yeah, I call day. all the time. Oh, she says, last okay. time I called, she said, "Sir, we have you on the list. There's no need for me to call you for you to call." I say, "Okay, <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow." I say, "Todd ignores that. He he believes in the squeaky wheel, uh, getting the grease. That is, I believe, an old proverb that Todd has passed down for many many years to me." Um, I, I know because every day, whether it's in the app we use to keep up with productivity or it's my cell phone, it's Todd going, Hey, when did you, Hey, did you finish this? Hey, what's the status on this? Hey, Hey, did you get this? Hey, Oh, here's, yeah. and then his favorite don't, thing. Don't get me wrong. It'd be really, really nice if I didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he, the best part though is when he finds there's multiple things that need to be done that haven't been done yet. Because then he's like, "Oh my gosh, I can contact him once an hour, every hour for four different things." So, uh, well, the, the, my favorite thing is when he sets his own deadline on our program. <laughs> anyway, so we got, and it's like we three other, weeks after that. We got other small talk to go on. Hey, um, I want to, uh, so, I want to show you guys something. I was on my phone earlier. Danny Byrne, he's one of our uh, <laughs> listeners. Yes, he sent me this. He did a fat tire clone, and Beautiful. Uh, he said it came out really good. He has one of our flow control faucets, so good job, Danny. Danny's a yeah, good dude. Good. I don't think he injured the Coles Cup. Not calling you out, Danny, but I don't remember seeing your name. But he's a good dude. I believe he's Irish, too. He uh, is completely, I mean, he, yeah. he, there's no <laughs> doubt. If you talk to Danny, he's, he's Irish. He's it's very <laughs> cool. Yeah, I wish I had an accent like that. It's very cool. You have a great accent. Mine's an impediment. Oh, yeah. And... Mine's not cool like Danny's. He you... has a cool Irish accent. Todd, can we get an MP3 of that interview you did with your grandma when you were like 19 years old? Because oh, yeah. Todd has the most Austinite accent. I, and I don't know where it went because you lost it. It was the yeah. like that Austin twain. It like Matthew McConaughey, everyone thinks it all has right, his all right, all right. He think they people think he has an exaggerated accent. That's how everyone in Austin sounded from like 80. 80- <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what everyone in Austin used to sound like until the Californians started coming and intermingling and crossbreeding <laughs> or whatever the word is. But, right. uh, but Todd, and I listened to this MP3 of Todd interviewing his grandmother and it was, so what do you think about? Like, it, it's just very, I can't even do <laughs> it. I can't even do it. I have to work on it. But anyway, we have relevant small talk for this episode. I want to start off Todd. Actually, I just published it to our homebrew happy hour newsletter as well as our super duper homebrew club. Uh, you have some gear for sale. Uh, both of y'all, I guess, technically oh, yeah. are selling the gear. I want to start off with that because I think it's a phenomenal deal for anyone listening. You can go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash sale, S-A-L-E, and see the whole listing. But Todd, talk about what the gear is that you are letting go. All right. So it's we've got three systems and then we've got a set of kettles. So it's, I guess, four all together. But the, all three systems are Herm systems. Mm-hmm. And these are basically, well, they're not basically. These are the systems that James and I have been brewing on over the last few years as we work towards developing the, the, the uh, new system. So I think we have an all original spike system that's 20 gallon. Uh, it's in great shape. We've, we've brewed on it quite a bit, but it's everything's been kept well and it's in good shape and works perfectly well. Uh, we have the kind of the, the very first brow tag pre prototype, I would call it. Yep. And, uh, that one has some, some really nice kettles. It's got a good controller that James really built from scratch. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, obviously you got all the parts in, but it's, uh, it's a nice controller. I used it for, for some time. Uh, gosh, I guess I used it for a year or two, right, James? Yeah, I think so. Cause it was last year, late last year when we upgraded to the controller, we were, we finally decided on yeah. using on that system and you were the guinea pig on it. And I think that, uh, after using both, this one's going to be far easier to use. Well, I mean, you can talk more about that. 
Yeah, it's just a lot simpler. So that yeah. some uh, on the uh, some uh, even on the controllers we use on the new system, they can be complicated if if you want them to be. Uh, we have set them up and and done all the programming and everything, so they're really really simple. And that's what I love about that uh, that BrowTech system. So we're we're about to release that, and and I would say in four to six weeks. Uh, but before we release that, we're brewing on full new systems now in two locations just to just to make absolutely sure we don't want to make any changes before release date so we're selling these old systems and they're they're really at a a fraction of what they cost originally and and definitely well below what we paid for them so uh yeah there we've got sheets on it Uh, we've got a sheet on it that you you said you were going to publish but yeah it's the pretty good deals if somebody's looking for a herm system And, and again We've brewed on all these. All these work perfectly well. There's there's nothing wrong with them. We're just trying to. They're, they're just part of the work that we've done to, to get to where we are on the on the new system. Yeah, and we have published it. I did. Um, we've been having server issues at Homebrew Happy Hour. They're getting resolved. We had to. Um, I'll, I'll get into that after this. Homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash sale is it is where they can go. Your your sheet. I had to fit some spelling and grammatical issues, but that's pretty status quo when you send me stuff to publish but yeah. we 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 have all the information up there and it should be working by the time people are hearing this because we implemented a new CDN mitigation server service and people who are listening that know more than I do, those were just words I regurgitated up from an email I got from our server provider. But either way, we're getting too much traffic on our site, and we need to first implement this thing. We're using Cloudflare to make sure the traffic we're getting is legit and the le- illegitimate traffic is going to be banned. And we're going to see if that resolves our server issues. But our current providers, like y'all, are getting y'all are using all, all your bandwidth. We have a VPS server virtual private server and it's all the bandwidth is going because you're getting thousands and thousands of views on on your podcast page and on this part of homebrew happy and blah 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 and i was like i know we're popular but then they're like oh but all the traffic's from this click farm in china um no they, they didn't say that <laughs> no but they they actually did say that our that our legitimate traffic's up dramatically over the last year so that, very, that's good news very drastic increase from this time which is great because last week's episode a lot of people didn't even get it yet, and I, thankfully a listener was like, hey, no no new episode this week? And then a bunch of other people, friends of mine, were messaging, like, and, and Patreon members, Super Duper Homebrew Club members were, were messaging, like, oh, what's going on? No new episode? I was like, yeah, I published it. I know I did. It's on our YouTube. <laughs> and I looked, and yeah, our site was down. Our site was down for like three days. And yeah, so, it's not coming up right now. Well, it just now did. It oh, is it going slow out. again? Uh, yep. Well, again, by the time I, I right before we started recording, we is when we entered our name server stuff into Cloudflare. And so they made me they led me to believe it'd be a couple hour process. So hopefully this gets published a, like a few hours after we're done recording. So hopefully it's resolved by the time people are listening. If not, go to uh, Facebook dot com forward slash homebrew happy hour. I'll publish the list there. If you don't do Facebook, email T Burns at Connection dot com or email Joshua at Connection dot com because our email if our site's down, our email down too for homebrew happy hour. Um, Todd would be happy to send you the sheet, as would I. And if you're interested in it, because like I said, the pricing I shared it already, Todd, with members of our Super Duper Homebrew Club, and yeah. uh, the feedback's been great. People are like, if I didn't already have it, I, where would I send my check to? Because like the, <laughs> you, you, it's very deeply discounted, and I'll just, I can just leave it at that. And um, y- y'all, the good thing about this year is, is James and Todd who've been using it. it they're the most meticulously cleaner uh, brewers I've met, and, and we're taking care of their gear, too. They don't just uh, play it up on the show. They really do clean and scrub and make sure things are working and, and replacing things that need to be replaced and all that jazz. So the the Spike one in particular, um, it, I think, is a heck of a deal if people are... That is a heck of a deal. <laughs> it's a heck of a deal. You, wow. you have the page pulled up right now, right? I'm looking at it yeah. right now. Yeah. Wow. It's a, I know. So Todd, I think Todd's just is trying to make up... Sp- 
some space because how many yeah, we're overrun to, with we're equipment. overrun yeah. with the equipment anyway talking about the super duper homebrew club uh this is a great time to announce april's uh wait pardon me what month are we in? yeah april is april 1st april's recipe kits for our recipe receiving members of our super duper homebrew club and the two choices are the simply juice pale ale or i'm excited about this one brian's kolsch that is you guys remember brian y'all were on that show right um mm, no we weren't <laughs> no i don't think we were invited uh, we didn't we weren't invited so brian yeah. mcgarry i was told i was gonna get yeah. invited yeah i was too and we were gonna yeah. all enjoy interviewing him and yeah picking his brain on his superior calls <sighs> we, the, what we're gonna have to have brian back on how about that we're gonna have to have brian back on especially since his recipe we made it into a kit you can buy it on catconnection.com. You can buy it on homebrewsupply.com. Or you can join our super duper homebrew club at a recipe receiving level. And we're going to ship it out to you with Imperial Dieter. That's a heck of a deal, in my opinion. And then you can brew what we all collectively determined to be the grand champion recipe kit for the 2021 Kolsch Cup. I think it would be good, actually. Maybe we could do a Q&A. We haven't done a Q&A in so long, and someone called me out on that. So maybe I thought we, could... we did those every month. Ah. <laughs> you sound... <laughs> we do... Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> Don't give me that look. <laughs> Technically, it's every episode because we're answering questions. There so. we go. I like it. Um, I, can I blame COVID, Todd? But anyway, we, we should have him back on. We can have him talking about it. And but then the other recipe, though, is also, I've been told by Joe, an extremely delicious pale ale. But it, it is very hop forward. I think the name implies that. Simply, Which one? Simply Juice Pale Ale. I don't think I've brewed. I have not brewed that. I'll have to brew that. You, yeah, yeah you brew that. I'll brew Brian's Kolsch, and we'll all be happy. We'll okay. uh, we'll have a good. We'll have a good, hey, maybe I could brew Brian's Kolsch because Todd, when I come up there next week, you told me I'm brewing on the new brow tag. Yeah, we we got, we have those. Uh, we, we we're doing our experiment. We have to uh, for the instructions. We're, we're brewing. Yeah, two, uh, we're going to use seven hops, brand new hops that just came on the market and we're going to brew the same recipe and use those in the flavor and aroma hops. So we'll talk about that more on a future episode, but that's what we have to brew going forward until we're done with those. Seven. Good point. I forgot about that. But, but you had told me that also the experiment, you and James wrote the instructions for the brow tag and I am tasked. I've never on my own brewed on a three vessel system. And you told me, James and I are going to sit there and drink beer, and you have to follow the instructions and see if you can brew on the brow tag without messing it up. Right. Well, you know, to be fair, James, he did say that he helps us by cleaning when we're brewing. So I've, I've cleaning. committed. That's interesting. I've, I've committed to doing the exact <laughs> same amount of cleaning that he does when we brew. This is oh, not... yeah. We, we can reciprocate. We can. No problem. <laughs> What is the evidence? I, I've clean. I take the kettle out. I, I take the grains to the chickens. I've done that many a time. Oh, uh, I'll take the grains to the chickens. Okay, and clean out that that pot. Um, trying to think of what I, I uh, uh, never have you left. And I didn't have to clean up <laughs> oh, for two hours. God. Oh, God. oh! First off, I don't leave on brew days hardly ever. I'm usually spending the night there, so I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm talking about it still being like that when you left the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the direction this show has gone. We, we've wasted eight, fifteen minutes of, of you just dogging on me. Gosh, I'm gonna write. I'm kinda, I think it's kind of fun. I'm gonna write our own one star review on iTunes. <laughs> God, Todd just reams him. It's terrible. Josh deserves better. Um, anyway, so about the recipes and all that, if you go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club, you can see the different ways to join. Right now, the only way to join the club is through Patreon. Because of the server issues, we are planning on having the new platform launch today. Because we're barely getting access to the back end of our site today, April 1st, um, it's probably be next week. It shouldn't be long. I have most of the foundation implemented. This last week was going to be for testing. So we're going to test for at least a few days uh, with some people who are already in the club and with some new people to see how the sign up goes. But you should be able to join in the near future, hopefully by next episode at homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club. 
So guys, uh, with all that being said, I think all of our small talk is out of the way. Um, the gear for sale, Brian's Coles Juice. Yep. So we did get right into it. We've got four questions for this week's show. First one came from our buddy Rick, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Rick wrote, hey, Dane, I'm torn between plastic faucets and stainless steel faucets. Is there a significant reason that stainless steel faucets are better, or is it all just a matter of personal preference? Plastic faucets are much better on my budget, but I don't want to be disappointed if you think it's worth having stainless steel. James, I'm throwing it to you because you deal with both. You you yeah. you sell a high volume of X1, which are fully plastic, uh, mm -hmm. and then you sell a high volume of stainless steel from from forward steel V10s or, or uh, uh, V3S or to like right you're holding there the V10 uh, yeah. flow control. You have a lot of options in both. What are your thoughts on the difference between the two, and if one is a drastic better fit for a given situation? Okay, the. To start off, this is our uh, X series faucet. So this has got a composite or a, a resin polymer resin body, plastic. Um, you know the best the best test for a plastic faucet is in a commercial environment. Now these have been exclusively in uh, all um, Twin Peaks restaurants for the last six or seven years, and occasionally we would get some broke, but there's lots of those restaurants in the North America and, and that's the biggest test. And if you saw the tap handles on these things, you'd wonder how they stayed together. So, Oh, they're huge. Yeah. They're they huge. put huge tap. They look like on. freaking baseball bats. So, and they're, they're slamming them open and closed all day long. And these things held together. So they're a good faucet. One thing about the plastic that's a little advantage over stainless steel is you can run highly acidic liquids through it that might, could possibly damage stainless steel that won't damage this one. They use the same components internally. Um, I think they're great. I, I, I wouldn't, I, in fact, that's, that's what I'm going to be putting in my system at home is, is this X one, actually this is the X two, but it's the same basic body. And this is, you know, the stainless steel. I like the stainless steel, but we have some scratched ones of these and I'm perfectly happy to use these. Todd, I know for many years, one of the biggest upgrades people do on a kit is all stainless on the liquid side, right? Like they want mm -hmm. everything their liquid touching to be stainless. What is the yeah. thought behind the brewer that goes that path for their beer? Well, I mean, I would argue that the same reason that they would go all stainless is why the plastic would be fine as well. Uh, the, the reason you go all stainless is people are afraid of brass parts, that they may have lead in them. That, I mean, I think a lot of that stuff may frankly be a little overblown because the, the the levels are just so small and some of the shanks and so forth are non-existent but but you know there's definitely advantages to stainless it lasts for a very very long time uh, a lifetime really i mean if you if you had a uh, one of our stainless steel faucets it, it'll it'll last for a lifetime it, it would last pretty much forever uh, if you do have problems with it we we always have the parts available uh, there might be an O-ring or a little part here or there that you might have to replace, but not like some other faucets th th that I've seen on the market where you have to, they had a, a issues where you had to replace the O-rings often. When I say every once in a while, I mean five to 10 years, maybe, you know? So yeah. th anyway, the stainless are excellent. I have six stainless uh, V10s on my Keyser at home. Uh, absolutely love them. I also have, uh, three X ones on my kegerator at home. So I have actually got both of those faucets running on two different systems and uh, the, the one, the X ones work perfectly well. I mean, I, I just, um, they're a lot more expensive for the stainless and that's, that it's not in everybody's budget and I would never be afraid to use the X ones. I think in a home brewing situation, they would last a lifetime as well. I think I like I think what you said too, James, st stood out to me about the commercial implementation is the biggest test. Like you, you guys have sold hundreds, if not thousands. I don't want to exaggerate, but t dozens yeah. of hundreds. <laughs> that that we've sold thousands. Yeah, you yeah, sold thousands yeah. of them to these restaurants, mm -hmm. and like you said, you go there and you're like, just, look, <clears throat> my only beef with most people uh, dispensing beer at any given restaurant is just they're not trained. That's all. 
Yeah. They're not trained. Yeah, they, and, don't, they don't know how to use the faucet. They don't know how to use have. the faucet. So that's one of the reasons why they got y'all. Well, they took up y'all's offer on the faucets because, one, their whole shtick is serving beer below freezing. We've gone over this before. And those faucets uphold in the harshest environment there. But also, too, because of the the hygienic side of it and and the lack of waste from the faucets that CM Becker makes where like flow control specifically helps decrease waste when people implement that because they're not having to pour and then and and pour out foam and then whatever. But again, back to my beef, I go to any given bar pre-COVID, I haven't been to a bar in forever, and they pour and and they're rough on that faucet. Like they are like trying to, you know, hammer it's it's, it's terrifying watching it because yeah. i'm just thinking about that lever like oh that lever is gonna go and then it's gonna be free beer for everybody like get the pictures <laughs> and when that thing breaks because i've bent levers on faucets being i think much gentler but it actually for me it was because i was too rough on the creamer action is how i bent one lever but yeah i'm kind of yeah, people with our creamer function they expect the, the throw to be the same for the creamer yeah. as the opening the the, the forwards opening and, and it's just you just crack it open. yeah and by people he means me because that's how i bent it because i the very first time oh. i used the v2g i bent the lever because i was like oh yeah like oh yeah you're supposed to and oops i, I bent it um it's just how strong i am that's all but you know, I, I would like to say one more thing before we leave this question i would the most important thing is that you have flow control oh there so you go yeah the, the ability to have a full flow control not uh, you know, there's some products out there that, that do a partial flow control, but these are full flow control. You you have, you can turn them all the way off. You can open them all the way up using the flow control. So you can control restriction completely. Yeah. Like what James and, is showing down there. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So having that ability is more important to, than whether you have the plastic version or the stainless That's version. A good point. And, and then at that point, I think it just comes down to budget and price uh, and, and what you, you know, the look you're looking for. So the look you're looking for. Yes. I like that. Yeah, and these things actually you with the flow control, they work so well that with the adjuster here, you can completely shut the flow of the, the beer off and you can open this thing up and it won't leak. So that's another thing. Yeah. If you go out of town and you have flow control, you can shut all these faucets off. And if you have the Allen adjuster, People won't know how to turn them on. I was on. just about to say, or if you have terrible teenagers, like I imagine is in my near future. Like I was at that age. <laughs> like I was, where, yeah, like, Todd, you don't have any experience with teenagers drinking your beer, but... Mm -mm. <laughs> Not at all. Just employees. But uh, absolutely, one reason why I'm going to want the Allen wrench feature is because then in confidence you can leave. Uh, it, it shut all the way off, and they are not. They literally won't be able to do anything uh, unless they find an Allen wrench that can fit in it. But it's not a – Oh, it wouldn't have slowed me down at that it, it would, you would have <laughs> Well, with a, with a V10, you could leave it hooked up. Yeah, and take the entire <laughs> top of it off to pull the full the whole lever off. Oh, you put it on the somewhere, yeah, and and it won't and it won't leak. So that that's a uh, people that's always a say. Do, you, that is a do you have idea. a lock for your faucets? And I'm like, you don't need a lock. You take the lever <laughs> out, and uh, you can leave it up and going, and it, it, nobody could pour a beer out of it. So it's that's got a, a built-in lock. That's so hilarious. That's kind of nice. You're right, James. Not without making a mess. You it, know? It, it wouldn't have slowed me down either. I would have been like, you know what? We're just taking these whatever these are on the side of this and opening it and just <laughs> lifting up the keg or pouring it. Uh, I would have figured out something. But anyway. Uh, Rick, thank you so much for submitting your question. This is a great time to remind you if and when we take your question on a future episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour podcast, we do give you a $25 gift card to CatConnection.com, courtesy of Mr. Todd Burns. Thank you, Mr. Todd, for your generosity. Moving on to question number two came from our buddy Brady L, who also used the submission form at HomebrewHappyHour.com. And Brady wrote, Joshua, I love the podcast. Funny and informational. I have been listening long enough to know how Todd busts your chops about brewing five gallon batches, even though you use a 10 gallon brewing system. I am in a similar situation. So hear me out, Todd. I don't have the space to accommodate larger batches for fermentation yet. I'm looking at getting a spike trio system to brew on and a CF 15 from them to ferment in. 
if their chilling solution, which I think uses glycol, ends up being too expensive for me, is there a different way to keep the CF-15 temperature controlled? I hate to sound cheap, but maybe James's old method of rotating ice packs around a fermenter would work here. If your question is to just suck it up and pay the price, then I guess that's what it is. Again, I love the podcast and Patreon, Brady. Um, this is... I, I his question came in recently and it happened mm-hmm. to be great timing because well, I know a guy with a spike trio system, man. I don't, and if you're buying the CF 15, I know a guy who can get you hooked up with a, a trio uh, that would be perfect for that CF 15 that you're looking at getting just email T burns at tech connection.com yeah. and ask him <laughs> for that blowout pricing. No, but moving on to his actual quit. That is actually a real answer that I was going to give him is that, before you buy, check out these used term systems because they really are a good price. But uh, James, with the I with the, know how to fix that problem <laughs> with the conical though, and he it, let's say he doesn't want to no, use well, without a glycol chiller, okay. I can totally get him fixed up with uh, all you need is a cooler, a little lunch cooler, some shanks, some lines, and a pump, and then you can you can use ice packs in that little cooler, keep the cooler, but you have to have a temperature switch for the pump. So it, instead of having a compressor that chills with a coil that's chilling glycol, a glycol water solution, you do the same thing, but you just use ice packs and water. Now, the thing is, is every morning, possibly at noon, and then when you get home at night, you're going to swap the packs out. You may need to get a bigger cooler so it'll hold temperature a little longer. But once you get it at the temperature you want, you won't have to be doing swapping out packs as much. But a lot of people use that system. It works great. You just got you're just using chilled water to go through that coil, and uh, and you're chilling the water manually with ice packs, and it works great. Can you make a pick list that I could maybe post sure. so that way, if anything, I'll send it to Brady. But I think that'd be good in the show notes, and it might be worth ma- making a quick video because I've seen you implement that at. Yeah, the, we've got an yeah. auxiliary yep. chiller. I did. That's how I did. I've seen it because I remember. Or the- you could just buy a war chiller, you cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a glycol chiller? Uh, or, uh, or how- I mean a, a glycol chiller. We, we, I have war chiller on my mind because we were talking about war chillers earlier. So, yeah, yeah you could just buy a, a, a glycol chiller. Or you could move to the Arctic and run a line outside <laughs> and back in. Todd, Todd, see this is what a what a privileged perspective you have when you always call us cheap. How dare you? Um, no, I like James's ingenuity and, and I think people who listen like it too, because sometimes it's, it's, you know, speaking of spike, I think they have a slogan like, uh, buy once, cry once. Right. I think Uh that's something they say where like, like Todd is saying like, Oh, just suck it up. It's just one purchase. But that stuff adds up when you're doing a system like, Oh, I'm going to get, uh, I want to brew bigger batches. So I got to get a three vessel system or whatever he's going to use for bigger batches. Oh, but then I'm going to need something fermented in and I'm going to do that. Like all of a sudden yeah. there's a lot of numbers well, on paper. You know, there's also another solution I've seen. We saw it at a homebrew con several years ago at a, a seminar we went to where a guy put a five gallon bucket in a fridge Put a, actually did use a wart chiller in, in the five gallon bucket. And then he was running it, uh, a hose in and a hose out, uh, and chilling that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can totally use, <laughs> if you've got a kegerator, that's got a freezer up top and you don't mind punching holes through the side, you can have a glycol tub or a glycol reservoir in the freezer. It's gotta be glycol because mm-hmm. freezers can get what 30 below. And you want to be able to have it to where it doesn't liquid, it doesn't freeze up. But then you could you just connect the pump to that, and then hit your thermocouple on your, on your conical, and yeah, it works just as fine. This guy was using the big part of his, uh, of his, uh, what do you just a refrigerator? I mean, he was using the bottom part of, of a fridge and putting yeah, a you big, can do old, that too. big old five gallon bucket in there. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't know how. It seems like it would. I don't know how it would, how well it would keep up, but he said it worked in the seminar at least. Or James, hear yeah. me out. What about well, it? Well, with the freezer, you could get there quicker. It'd be more efficient. Than, it would be than more 32 efficient. Thirty-two degree, yeah, uh, ambient temperature. You'd be you'd be colder instantly. So mm-hmm. it would it would work better. What about a glycol in a spare bathtub in the house with water and ice pads, and you just pull the water? Oh, that's Todd's face. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm just. Here. <laughs> 
I actually, I, J- James's first uh, suggestion is actually the one that I I like in this scenario. If, if you're worried about the budget, because there is yeah, a, you could you know everybody's seen the orange like our cooler brew. Yes. you know they they call those water coolers. You could use one of those too because it's taller. So you could put one of our uh, wart chilling coals at K Connection Sales. So you could use it for chilling the wart, and you could use it also when you're done to cycle and temperature control the wart, the the conical. So I mean, you could use you could do dual duty with one of those. Absolutely, and 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 there's got to be listeners of our dozens of dedicated listeners. There's got to be one who the, maybe you do it differently. And you can always mm-hmm. email or or send. I've really been big on the hotline, and we have some voicemails that I need to start playing for feedback. I love getting feedback, and we get so much feedback through email and also through the the voice line. But leave it at if you if you don't mind three two five three zero five six one zero seven. Leave us your feedback if you do it a different way and whatever works for you. We'd like to hear and help Brady out because. Um, Maybe, maybe in Brady's case, he goes, you know what? Ah, it wasn't in my, it, I mean, I could have used that money elsewhere, but I'm just going to do glycol because it'll be easier yeah. to have it set up. But or he If may, you ever have one, you'll never go back. Right. right. It's had, that's, yeah. I was going to say, because James, you do a really good job of covering the gambit of like, okay, here's your situation. Here's, let's do it this way. But once you have a conical and once you have glycol, yeah. that's the dream. That's the dream. Yeah. You're going to love it. Yeah, you can do buckets and, and ice baths and wise packets for the rest of your life. But if you got the budget, it's going to be life changing. Yeah. It's so, you just yeah. change a button. And yeah. another thing, too, you can do, uh, you, you know, a lot of people when they logger, they go into, you can do your, your uh, diacetyl rest. And then some people that do loggers, that's another thing you can lager with one is you can step down the temperature as, as the fermentation starts to go get done. You can slowly change it a couple of degree, degrees a day till you get where you, where you want to be. There's a, you have complete temperature control with a glycol chill that you don't have with ice packs and, and a manual thermostat. It's, 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 exactly. it makes your brew day a lot easier, easier, uh, more predictable, it's yep. uh yeah it, it is worth it i agree but well, todd is right yeah just just pop for the glycol chiller you'll I don't, thank us for i it. don't like saying those words on this show though todd is right <laughs> todd is right. I, don't like, I don't like that uh but anyways brady hope we helped you and again if you're listening and you have your own way of doing it or something we didn't think about email us uh you can or do the hotline because the email might not be working although before we get to the next question which by the way thank you brady for submitting it i just got an email from cloudflare that we have officially been added to the cloudflare premium Pro plan. Congratulations. Your site, homebrewhappyhour.com, will now receive the benefits of Cloudflare performance. So by the time people listen to this, homebrewhappyhour.com should be working. If it's not, it's now Cloudflare's fault, fault Todd. It's not my fault anymore. Now it's Cloudflare. Um I just I just went there and popped right up. Did it really? Oh yeah. Fast. Ah, it turns out when you spend enough money, things work. So yep. it's Todd's money too. That's the best part. All right, moving on to question number three. Came from our buddy. <laughs> <laughs> came from our buddy Carl, who used the submission form as well at homebrewhappyhour.com. Carl wrote, "I have a question about regulator malfunctioning, but malfunctioning might be the wrong word. I will set my regulator to dispense at 10 psi on say a Monday." And by Friday, if I don't touch it at all, it will be at 14 or 15 PSI. Is this normal? Is there anything I can do besides annoyingly correcting it every time and checking on it at the end of every week? Regulator creep? I, I Normal, again, I, and I don't, he, he said uh, malfunctioning might be the wrong word. I think, I don't know if normal is the right word. I've seen it on me and my dad's, and it is just for us a minor inconvenience where we set it at eight. And like a couple weeks later, oh, it's up to 10. Or sometimes it creeps down. When it creeps down, that's usually the indicator for us that gas is going. But uh, Todd, I'll throw it to you first. Do you think he has an actual malfunctioning regulator? Or is this kind of status quo for those using beer regulators or gas regulators? Uh, well, it's a, I have a question before I can answer it 100%. First and foremost, yes, it shouldn't be creeping up. It is a malfunction. Uh a lot of times when you first adjust one, they will creep up a little bit and then you readjust them. At some point, though, it should stay. It shouldn't continue to creep up forever and ever. Uh, it's not unusual at all for, for a regulator to creep. Uh, four, 10 to 14 is quite a bit. I mean, you could get into an issue where you're overcarbonating your beer and, and have other issues with it creeping up that much. 
if you, you know, if you purchased it from Keg Connection or Homebrew Supply, there's a two-year warranty on all the Taprite regulators, and that would fall under the warranty. We would we would want to get that back and rebuild it and and get it working correctly. Uh, if uh, most regulators, uh, Taprite regulators, uh, some of the old school good ones like Cornelius, uh, they should have rebuild kits. Unfortunately, we're, we're seeing a lot of regulators come in from overseas that are, that are inexpensive, but you can't rebuild them. And if they quit working, you just throw them away and buy another one. Whereas something like Taprite, uh, a regulator that we're working on right now as well, if you, if you build, if you have that, one of those regulators, they should be able to give you years and years and years of service and, and be right on. Um, this is, this is very close to my heart because I am testing regulators constantly right now. I've been testing regulators all week and we were having a problem with a regulator that was creeping up, but it only did it one or two times. And what we finally determined was that on these, on this new regulator, the threading that it went through, it was allowing the, the, the screw to possibly back up just a tiny amount the first time or two that you set it. And that was, that was actually allowing it to creep up. Whereas uh, once that had been used a couple of times, it, it did not continue to creep up. So uh, it, is it, it's very typical for one to creep up. It's not very typical at all for one to creep up over and over again. Once you've readjusted, it should stay. I may have missed it. What was the question you had for, for him? Like, was it, if no, it's... It is uh, the question I had was, have you just, you know, are you adjusting it over and over again, or did you just adjust it and then it creeped up? Ah. But you, I think he said that he's had to do it. Uh, well, see. the way uh, I read I it, set the regulator to dispense at 10 on Monday and I don't touch it all. Be it. 14 to 15 PSI. Yeah. I mean, if that happened one time, then I would readjust it. If it happens every Monday through Friday, then you got a bad regulator. Gotcha. That is the question. You're right. Is, is this a consistent thing going on with your regulator or, it, or even I'd even ask, is it stopping at 14 or 15 or is that where you found it? And then uh, corrected it because like you said, Todd, it could be, I mean that, yeah, you're right. Five is high. Uh, like I've like t my yeah. dad. Yeah. Five, five PSI I've moving five digits is pretty high. Well, ours usually moves from like eight to 10. And, and that's because we, we set it at first and then it goes up a little and then it stays at 10. You're like, Oh, okay. So it's, for us, a lot of the time it just ends up being, we know it's going to go up a little bit. So we'll set it at seven and then it gets, you know, in that sweet spot for us of dispensing. Like, it Go ahead. Yeah, no, and that's it. the other thing too. The type of regulator that these are diaphragm regulators, they're inherently not a, a super precise instrument. So you can actually dispense a beer and have it, you know, flow and then stop flowing, or you could turn the valve off and on and hold your finger over it several times and stop it. And it may go to 11 one time, it may go to 10 another time, may go to nine another time, but it's going to stay right around 10 if that's where you have it set. Uh, 15 is just, that's way over what it should be. Right. And I, I want to add to your part about you testing regulators all week. I feel like you've been testing regulators for four years. I, I have. Like, I have. <laughs> like, like every time I come up there, your phone, one time you gave me your phone to, I think you were showing me a picture uh, well, it's something at the ranch. Maybe it was of the dog, but either way, like the next 40 photo, uh, 40 things in your phone were video clips of your testing on regulators. Well, I, I, I have people send me regulators <laughs> I know. to test and I will, I will send them back. Like you said, 40 photographs and sheets showing how I've done a hundred stops on them and what they hit at each level. And they're like, they don't even want to contact me again after that, you know? Oh, I know. I know that feeling. Um, but they are, it is just funny that, that uh, this question came in just because I was like, oh yeah, Todd's the guy. Todd's the guy to answer the regulator question. No, no offense to James, uh, but- No, I'm not the regulator guy. Yeah, Todd is- <laughs> Todd, No every, way. I one time, well, I, I, I say that though, your video on replacing the bonnet cap, 
for the tap right have you seen how many i mean it skyrocketed yeah. in views no. recently yeah james, james says he's not he's, the regulator guy but he knows more about regulators than than uh, 99 percent <laughs> of the people out there absolutely the world, so. you do yeah. hey, that video i will mention on our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash homebrew happy hour is getting for some reason that video Y'all's all grain in the cooler brew and then the Anvil Foundry Brew Day, which what is up? I'm digressing real quick. Anvil, I know they're in, in high demand and low supply, but I did not realize how high demand. They, they must be doing some marketing promo recently because I feel like people's demand for the Foundry has skyrocketed recently. That video of ours that Joe is the do, going over the overview brewing on it um, got like 12,000 additional views in a week. And we keep getting feedback on it. He keeps getting emails for orders. People are like, oh, I'm ready to order it. I saw your video. And he's like, you can pre-order it. <laughs> but- yeah. Well, and I, and I actually, I actually talked to, to John Blickman about this a week ago, they have, the demand has been much higher than they, than they originally thought it would be. And as you, as you know, James, I don't have to tell you about the supply issues at the moment and that logistics oh, shipping issues yeah, at the moment. It really is. It, it's, it's made it very, it's very hard for them because they have high demand and they're unable to get supply, which is against the law of supply and demand, right? Uh, yeah. Except they, what they could do is raise prices, I guess, right? But, uh, but they haven't done that. They've kept the price the same. And I know that they're getting quite a few in. Uh, is it May or maybe June? I was told uh, mid-May to, to early June is yeah, what I was they're told. They're not actually going to be shipping them until June. But they're getting a pretty good amount in in June, and hopefully that'll allow more people to purchase them. So yeah, that's what we're hoping. Um, great product, by it the is way. a great product, and they're a great company. We love Blickman. Oh, but yeah. anyways, back to wrap up Carl's question. Uh, yeah, there, if you did get it through Tech Connection, it happens to be a tap right. You do have the warranty option. Uh, email me. Uh, I'll follow up with Carl guys, and I'll let y'all know if it was uh p- something he had gotten from us. If it's, if if it's not a tap right brand, if you got it from us and it's another brand. We'll take care of you. Right. If you bought it from somebody else and it's another brand, we'll help you with that as well. Unless you, you unless you did that Keck Connections dot com because I, I I love the feet. <laughs> <laughs> I still well, get no, you that. shouldn't even say that. I know. Uh, uh, I know. Now ten people are gonna go to it. <laughs> They're like I went, I well and I don't know who's trolling me now or who's being real because now my inbox will get hey Josh I'm order number and it seems like a made up number from Keck Connections dot com <laughs> and I'm mad and I it's, <laughs> it's Keg Connection. There's no S on the end. There's it's no not S. plural. It's not that's plural. another company Keck connection yeah i need to enunciate real good to, to get that but, you know, seriously if you're having a problem with a regulator t burns at kegconnection.com i don't care where you bought it i'll help you with it yeah. just reach out to me absolutely todd is the walmart of support and i mean that in a good way that's the, the i mean that uh, not disparagingly but anyways thank you so much carl for submitting your question we got one final question for this week's episode came from our buddy pearson who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com and he wrote howdy tedson's pearson from wisconsin here and he spelled howdy like how and d-e-e um i love it <laughs> as a new home brewer let me say that i greatly appreciate your youtube channel which is how i found your podcast todd is on a video about immersion chillers which is what leads me to my question i have a local supply shop selling very affordable plate chillers do you see or do you use immersion chillers because they're better or because they're more easily available to you as in you already have them I don't think you have ever discussed plate chillers. I'm not all caught up on backlogged episodes, though. What do you think about plate chillers against immersion chillers? Todd, you do have that very nice immersion chiller video. Uh, And you right now it's on sale at catconnection.com, that combo pack that you're featuring in that video, which is what me and my dad use. I think that's what y'all use every brew day as well. Uh, I don't know about there in the shop at the barn for sure. Y'all use that combo pack to immersion chiller setup every time y'all brew, right? Yeah, I I like it. I mean, and I'll turn the plate chiller over to, to James in a minute because he has a lot more experience with plate chillers. I, when I first started using a chiller, I, uh, I did use a plate chiller one time. It was kind of a, it was a, le- a less expensive one and, and I wasn't, I wasn't personally crazy about it, but I think James has had better experience with them. I just like putting the, uh, 
the immersion chiller in my wart, putting the other one in ice and having the, the control that if, if I've got warm water, which I have, you know, that's one thing we're in Texas, right? So we have, <laughs> yeah. we have a lot of warm water. And the nice thing about an immersion chiller is that you can pre-chill it. And then even if, even if it's a hot summer day and your water temperature and your faucet's coming out at 95 degrees, you can get your wart cooler than that by pre-chilling it with ice, then running that through the immersion chiller and, and cooling your wart down that way. So James, tell them. About yeah, it. no, um, I, I just say one word cleaning. And that's why I like the uh, coil chillers over a plate chiller. Now we'll tell you a plate chiller, like a Blinkman Terminator, there's lots more surface area. So you've got a plate with wart running over it. And then the plate underneath, it's got cold water and then they're just stacked that way. But the pro and that works real good because it's lots of surface area. It's really efficient. But the problem I always ran into with the, with the plate chillers, if you get any kind of hop particles in, in, in the chiller, yes, you can back flush them, but sometimes you can't get all that out. And because you got to think about it, you're running sweet liquid with vegetable matter going through it. So there's going to be parts of that plate chiller that you probably can't get that vegetable matter out because it's turned into glue on the inside or CM would say glue. <laughs> and uh, so what you would have to do and what we did is I would, I at the beginning of the day when we would break out Big Bertha, I would boil the plate, I would boil the plate chiller in a big, uh, like a bean stock pot. I would just stick the whole thing in there after I flushed it with warm water as much as I could, back flushing it. Heck, I flushed it both directions. But in the, at the end of the day, I did not want to have contamination. So I set it in a pot with the lid on it and it steamed all day long. So if it did have anything in it, it was sanitary and we never had any issues, but we had one contamination issue on a 40 gallon batch of homebrew because of a plate chiller uh, had an infection in it. So I was real leery about using it, but with a coil, and you can clean that all day long, you know it's clean, you can see it's clean, it's easier to use. Well, it's only, uh, it's only on the outside. It, yep. The inside, you could have, uh, uh, you know, poop water matter. running through it, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter because it's, uh, right. it, never t it never has, it has a, a barrier between it. You know, no, okay, okay, maybe no, poop no, no. water. No, 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 no. <laughs> I like this because you know, Brulosophy Brew has their experiments, and we've never done one, so we could do the effects <laughs> of uh, unsanitary, unpotable water through a wort chiller. That'll be our experiment. Yeah, while we're making chicha beer, <laughs> well, you know, we yeah. just make it all gross. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we can all be spitting in the in the pot. That's funny. Oh, that's down funny. Do you still do you still dip? <laughs> you don't dip anymore, right? No. <laughs> that would be five years uh, next month. Uh, but but unfortunately, I got you in the bad habit. I say I. I'm not blaming me. You started smoking cigars on your own. You're an adult. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we could we could all smoke cigars and spit into the pot. Yeah, that'll be that'll be <laughs> great. Uh, um, I the know poop, the poop water's never going to get in there though, Josh, unless oh, you no, have a yeah. leak and then you got a yeah. big problem. <laughs> well, I was going to say, yeah. sometimes ours has a little drip at the top where the, where the hose, <laughs> that would be the grossest you should, drip. You should stop that drip. You shouldn't have that drip. Oh yeah. no, we have, I'm saying we, we, we stop it when we see it. Like you have to, we just have to adjust the tubing. But with, if you, if you ever drip poop water in it, you're going to want to do a 90 minute boil. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not say anything to anybody about it. <laughs> James, on that inf on that 40 downs, did y'all have to dump that whole batch? Or did y'all just... Well, we didn't. It, it didn't. Uh, 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 yeah, we did. Because <laughs> after... Uh, it was one of those things is when you spend that kind of money on fermentables... I already know where you're of, going with this, by the way, James. It's like, you know, you you you, knew, you know you can drink it. You know, it, it may not yeah. be that bad, but you can yeah. drink it. And, and, yeah, and I'm not judging you. I, I, and, I've drank... Like, no, we can't do that. My dad and know? I didn't dump that keg of Kolschweizen until there was like a half a gallon left. And then I was like, fine, I can't do this anymore. But we drank like four and a half gallons of it. Well, Just, what, what about the scorched beer? Remember, we oh, tried yeah. to drink you, that. You dumped it before we could ever do anything, remember? You dumped it. Yeah, no, I, drank, I drank some of it. Todd had some of it. Yeah, yeah it was bad. Shout out to yeah. Kenny. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> He's the listening. Rogan beer. Yeah. Oh. Rogan beer. I love the way that you and Kenny were brewing, and that's completely Kenny's fault. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, obviously. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. Obviously. Right, right. Um, wrapping up Pearson's question, I'll say this. I think we're, I, I 
have to agree with Todd and James, especially because of where we're brewing. It seems to be the most effective way. What I am interested in, we are having a custom one built by our buddy at Cuss. Jeremy is building oh. us a custom one that's going to fit the new brow tag kettles. It's going to work out mm-hmm. great. And I'm very interested in running a comparison of it. Because really, for me, chilling is all about efficiency. You know, sure. like uh, the faster yeah. I get the wart down, I don't care if a plate chiller did it better. I might not switch actually because, like what you said, James, sanitary cleaning it yeah. seems like a pain in the butt. Uh, well, you know, if you look at uh, Wes uses uh, at the the head the at brewer Teddy's. at Teddy's, they have a plate chiller. But the cool thing about that plate chiller is it's got two big threaded rods and wing nuts, and you can take the thing apart and you can scrub each individual plate. Yeah, can't do that with a homebrew plate chiller because it's all welded together. So. You know, if you're if you're doing a lot of whirlpool additions and all of that, and it, there's chances you're going to get hops in a, in a plate chiller, they're going to be really hard to get clean. Exactly. So that's what it comes down to me too. And like I said, the um, you know, he had mentioned Todd about affordable uh, plate chillers. I I don't want to. I I think Pearson may not be shopping at immersion chillers too because I they seem to be in the same ballpark. For the most part, I remember those ones that you had overseas. Like we did a Black Friday special. This was like 2012. Ninety nine dollars. It was ninety nine dollars back then, and they didn't even sell that well back then. No, but, we we ordered ten of them. Yeah, and it took us like two years to sell them all. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't they know. They just wh- don't sell well. They didn't they never sell have well. Sold but well. but remember, didn't that the same one you used before that you just yeah. were not yeah. impressed with? So maybe yeah. we just had the wrong affordable wort chiller. But uh, the immersion ones that that we use, which are the ones that they sell on catconnection.com and homebrewsupply.com. I, I can testify through personal use that those work great. And specifically the combo pack is really good. But again, uh, the one from Cuss, I'm very excited about because I'd love to, if that works out, I'd love to start being able to sell those. If, if you can yeah. work out a, a deal, Jeremy's a good dude. But anyway, I, uh, Pearson, thank you so much for submitting the question. Guys, that's all I've got for this week's show. I greatly appreciate y'all's time. Uh, when I'm up there next week, I'm looking forward to y'all drinking beer while I try to brew on a brow tag. I'm yeah. looking forward to that too, by the way. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to watch him brew beer. Hey, and then, let's oh, make Josh, it a live event. That's what I was going to say. Oh, there you go. That's a great idea. I'm, I'm willing. Oh, on the laptop setup? I'd love that. Let's do that. Let's Hell do that. Yeah, oh, we definitely need to do that. Oh, oh before we go, too, you were going to announce part two of the uh, uh, of the extract brewing, the video for part two, when it's going to be uh, did we ever, released. Did right? we ever film a part two? Yeah, yes, we, yeah, we did. Oh, part, I got, two, I got, part three or filmed. Yeah. I got to look at my emails for the that note. I don't remember uh, following up on that. No, or, it's about done, right? Isn't, aren't we going to release that? Soon? Anyway, thank you so much for y'all's time. I appreciate y'all. Some of y'all, James, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> I will see y'all next week. Thank you, guys. That's why Bye. he's the goat. <laughs> And that that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. If you want to get a free pack of Imperial Yeast with a recipe kit, go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash club and join one of our recipe receiving tiers. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening.